All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, declare a quorum and call the City of Groton Committee of the Whole for Monday, July 22nd, 2019 to order. Kirkpatrick, please call the roll. Present, Joe Mayor Keith Hedrick, Deputy Mayor Jamal Beckford, Councilors Lisa McKay, Virginal Stanford, Renegade Depot, Michelle Carter. Uh -huh. Finance Director Ronnie House, Clerk Deborah Patrick, excused as Councilor Minerva Ortiz. All right, I'm going to do something different. We don't normally do this, but I have my attorney here, so to be fiscally prudent, I'm going to, I need a motion to go into executive session pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 1 200 6 Alpha to discuss union negotiations to include counsel, Chris Hodgson, Bill Walcott, Ron Newhouse, and Linda Avedizia. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Session. We are in executive session. We will cover the rest of this when we come out. To those of you that are in the audience, I apologize. This is going to be a few minutes, but we need to take care of this in executive session. Okay, we're going to adjourn to C8. Okay, thank you. We are now back into regular session. We'll start with 392, the review of the City of Groton non-union handbooks. Change of the pension and medical plan. Where's Linda? Could I get you to come up? So we have Linda Abadizian, my HR director. We have Bill Walcott with Hooker and Holcomb, in addition to the council and Ron Newhouse, our finance director. Okay, uh, Linda. Yes. And then stand by to answer any questions that the council may have. We now have Bill here so he can talk about the retirement plan. Sure. So um, the effective July 1, 2019, we had planned on switching over the defined benefit plan that we currently have to a cash balance plan for all non-union new hires starting on 7-1-19. Um, the difference between the two plans basically is that the takeaway from the cash balance plan is um, rather than the city paying for the pension payments for the length of time or the, the life of a person, they actually, the person will come away with a set amount of money that is equal to the employer contribution, the employee contribution, and any interest earned during that time. And when they do leave the city, they can either take the cash with them or they can purchase an annuity and then have the payments um, over time if that's what they choose. As far as the medical plan goes, um, we are trying to at some point just not have the um, PPO plan any longer and have the high deductible health plan with the HSA contribution. Um, right now, 50% is paid by the city. And we will be starting that for the non-union um, folks Janu uh, July 1st, 2020. So they have one year to become very familiar with the high deductible health plan. Um, we'll have some training sessions, one-on-ones uh, -on -ones if that's what they want, so that they can really understand how to use it and um, the benefits of having that, because there are benefits to having one. I've had a couple of employees come and talk to me about the high deductible plan versus the PPO plan, and uh, there's some concern about, you know, if they're near retirement with the deductible, uh, how that could be concerning for them. But, but, and we're going to look at that throughout the year to see if we're just going to go straight to the high deductible or if we're with the PPO there, the PPO option, right? We're still thinking about that. Yes. So. Uh, just wanted to let you know that. Right, and the difference that we're looking at if we continue to keep the PPO option is um, right now the, we, we pay a percentage um, for each plan depending on if it's not union or union if the percentage is similar. But if we decide to keep the PPO going forward, it will be a bio plan so that it will cost a little bit more because we really want to make people try out the high deductible health plan, um, get used to it again, 
And so that gives them another little cushion, but they will have to pay extra if they want to stay in the EPO plan. Okay, Bill, could you talk about the retirement plan, the cash balance plan? Sure. For the non union? Yeah, we did. Um, we took a look at the ongoing cost of your five minute plan. And <coughs> Ron has some handouts here. For the, uh, we looked at 11 um, non union, seven non union uh, city employees. And their cost going forward was about 7.7% of pay. And for this, for the proposed cash balance plan, the city, the proposed city contribution is 4% of pay. So long term, we thought that would save the city 3.7% of pay for that group. Um, and we did some projections based upon, these are all based upon the July 1, 2000. 18 the actual evaluation, all the assumptions that we put in that report. Uh, so long term, we found for that group of 11, 11 people uh, projected savings over 20 years of almost $300,000 for the city. So that was one group. Uh, the other group that we looked at was the, um, the non-union utility folks. There are 21 people in that group. Uh, we found that the Cost going forward in the DB plan, uh, the five benefit plan for that group was 6.1% of pay. Uh, so if, if you're only going to do a 4% of pay cash balance contribution, uh, the long term savings would be 2.1% of pay. And we found that, that generated about $460,000 savings over 20 years. And based on all the assumptions that we have, we don't, we don't always, the assumptions don't always come true. But just compared to purposes, the, uh, the cost of the um, cash balance plan is less than the cost of the current plan. Like, you know, the uh, risk of the cash balance plan is also less as the participants' uh, cash balances will earn based, will earn in return based upon the actual fund earnings. Um, if the city, you know, in the current plan, if the fund earnings aren't as expected, and the city has to put in more money. So the city has more risk in the current plan than the group in the Okay. Questions or comments from the council? <coughs> yeah, I, I have a question. So, Ms. Abadizian, um, if I were already, say, a union employee, and I you know, I'm already in a, uh, um, a what is it, the pension, pension plan, plan. Mm -hmm. right? And if I, um, and if the new hires are now going to be going into uh, this new plan, this mm -hmm. uh, cash cash balance plan, mm -hmm. um, does that affect me negatively? Is there, am I put at risk in any way by these new employees not going into the, cash, <coughs> into the pension plan? Yeah, that question has been brought up before. Because what you're saying is because there's because there's no longer a, sort of a funding stream coming into it, whether or not that I can't ask. I would not want to answer that question. This is from these two gentlemen. Sure. Yeah. Actually, um, you know, the cash balance is still still a part of the uh, defined benefit plan. It's all one big group of assets. Um, so all the employee contributions that get entered into the put into the as cash balance contributions would go into that plan too. Um, the other thing is, is is that this plan is, I mean, this is a common thing. I run into this everywhere, where it's not like Social Security, where it's the Social Security is like four percent funded or something that's in danger of running out of money. This plan is ninety-five percent funded, uh, and so when somebody retires or a new group, somebody a new group doesn't come into the plan, it's not dependent upon future contributions. It's actually, if, if new people don't come into the plan, there's actually less risk for the city. So you're, it's not like Social Security. Like Social Security, you worry about, okay, the new people, they've got to pay for people that are retiring now. Well, that's not the situation. You've already, you've already funded the liability for the people who are there now. So okay. it's, it's a lot different than the Social Security thinking. And I think to kind of answer your question as well, 
there is no risk to you as a current employee that's in that DB plan. You will get the benefit that you are entitled to. So even though the pool of money may be the same, it'll always have the funding for the participants of the defined benefit yeah, plan. Yeah, we'll do evaluation every year to see how much to put in. Yeah, Councilor Depot. I just wanted to point out that we um, specifically asked you for numbers, and so thank you very much for yes, providing much them. Um, and also, I know we talked about this at length at the last um, meeting. It was discussed, and I mean, the major thing was to make sure there's enough benefit to outweigh any possible liability. It seems, you know, to make a lot of sense to to change for the, the future. Um, it will make things easier in the future and it will save us a significant amount of money in the future. Um, so I'm just happy that we have, even though I know that these are based on assumptions, right. but they're based on educated assumptions. It's not, you know, made up. So, the assumptions that we're using to fund your plan. Right. So, um, you know, I'm happy that we have numbers. Okay. Good. Anyone else? Councilor Sanford? No question. Councilor McKay? Councilor Carter? I, I have another no, one. So <clears throat> my understanding is for the folks in the the um, pension plan, there's some sort of like advisory board. So we would still have an advisory board over the, the pension plan. And that would also take care of that we'd invest the same way with our the people with the defined benefit plan. Right. The retirement board would still oversee all of the funds on the all going it's one big pool of money. However, mm -hmm. it'll be earmarked for the new employees that are in the cash balance plan. will have their little piece of the big portion of the, of the money. But it is it'll all be so the new employees won't have to invest on their own. The retirement board will invest, and they'll be part of the, the pension trust fund. Yeah, the other thing that the investment advisory, you know, once you start looking at people retired from the cash balance plan, which would be a number of years from now, um, you probably want to be more liquid in assets than you are now. You want to have some cash on, on hand, if you will, to, to pay out some of those lump sums as opposed to the, the annuity payments that are going on now. People could still get the annuity payments with the cash balance plan. That's sometimes you, you know, maybe you change your investment philosophy a little bit, down, a little bit more you know, fixed income than you do when you have this cash balance component. But this might be a little off topic, but why, why is our, I mean, it, it's a good thing, but why is our pension plan, why is that? Why are we 95% funded? The city's been fiscally responsible. Um, it is in some of the contracts as far as funding the actuarially determined contribution. And the city's been very prudent about not cutting that contribution and making sure that that contribution was made okay. during the budget process. It wasn't something that was an easy, let, well, it's, we'll cut it this year and we'll make up for it next year. And then the same thing happens the following year and the following year. Yeah. The average of your peers around the state and all the cities and towns, we just got done with survey with the 2017 data is about 73 percent funded so you're, you're better than average any um, other anything else i might just uh yeah. the um miss avadesian you you'd mentioned with the uh with the health plan the high deductible health plan that there were some benefits to going to the health to this new plan yes um for one thing, um, well, I'm, I'm coming from an old perspective, that there are things that you can do with the money um, post-retirement that you can't do with um, other things. You can pay for Medicare expenses. Um, you kind of caught me on fire for a second. It's but it's, it's, the other thing that I like about it, it's your money. It's in your account. Um, no one can take it from you. It goes with you wherever you go. We use Charter Oak for our, um, for the HSA account. And um, basically, if you shop around, you can get more bang for your buck, so to speak. I use the, um, I had to get an MRI a couple years ago, and I shopped around for it with hospitals charging 700 and change. A standalone was charging maybe 500 and change. So um, also the same with um, prescription drugs, if you're paying for them, because initially you have to pay whatever the contracted rate is with the pharmacy. So you can shop around for that also. Um, there, you have, 
you have more control over how it's spent. Um, you can also, when you get the EOBs from the insurance companies, so that they show you what you've gotten, you know, it's, I think a lot of people will take the chance to, or take the time to look at it to make sure that what's being billed is what's supposed to be billed. Um, but for me and my husband, we just see it as, uh, he works at EB, he gets a nice, um, I think one of, one of you work at EB, someone mm -hmm. works at EB, yeah. And you're, okay, so you know how they, they also fund the HSA. That's mm -hmm. a really nice funding too, so. We see that as part of our retirement um, also, not just as a health plan, but also money we can use in retirement that's not really as tied down as some of the other funds. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions or comments from the council? Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Bill, thank you. Linda, thank, thank you. you. Okay, we're gonna go to 742 Groton Utilities Auto Pay. Sue. Peter Daniels is our customer service general manager, and Sue is the general manager for IT. <coughs> um, I know this has been a, a huge concern for the council in, in regards to when we're going to start auto pay um, and, and roll it out. Um, we've done a lot of um, due diligence um, with our um, vulnerability testing company, which is NetSpy, which we've, we've talked about in the past. Um, there has been a couple of, of things that, that have come up that needs to be re um, remediated, remediated um, on our test system um, before we can actually go live. Um, right now, um, we are in the process of working with the vendors um, our goal is to hopefully by the end of August that we will be able to roll out a pilot like we have talked about. Um, so if anybody is interested in act with being on the pilot, um, please call customer service and let us know. Um, she's already on it. Glenn is already on it. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, do you have any questions? Customer service number is? 860-446-4000. Okay. 860-446-4000. If you would like to be in the pilot program for AutoPay, did you not want me to put that out loud? <laughs> You're not going to get that many responses. Just, yeah, just, yeah, this is just for pilot. This is just yeah, for us just to for do pilot. a test in the pilot. Right. Well, so. you can always say no. Just say no. Yes. <laughs> and certainly we have to consider first that the remediation occurs as it should sure and that it tests positively absolutely so our target is August the weekend of August 23rd for our cut over to live however we take the protection of our customer and employee information very seriously absolutely so we won't deploy if it's not safe exactly <laughs> thank you um, so the issue is that the data goes through several points of vulnerability, and we are trying to make sure the entire stream is secure. Correct. Correct. Um, so I understand, and I knew from the very beginning, obviously we've been talking about for years, that that was the issue. Um, so I know you guys have been working very hard to remedy it, um, so thank you very much, and I am very excited to get auto pay. Questions or comments? When you do. <laughs> Questions <laughs> or comments for these guys? Councilor Stamper. Would there be a service fee? Like say if my bill was eighty dollars and I auto pay, am I paying like a three dollar service fee along with this eighty dollars that I'm paying? No. We don't we don't charge service fees right now. So if you call and pay on the phone with the credit card, we are not assessing you a service fee. From Groton Utilities, we are not. If your bank charges you, that's something that we can't control, but you won't get a, a charge from Groton Utilities. Okay, that's a good question. Because yeah. No. There is no if, if your if your credit card company charges you that that's nothing to do. But same thing we do now we do not charge for 
um, any any payments that are made, if you call on the phone to make a payment, if you go on our web portal, there was no service fees. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? You can pay online. Yes, you can. Since when? <laughs> Four years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I stay on that phone. I'm like, come on. Yeah. So all of them, not with you guys. That's why they call them directly to the person. Yep. The, the automated service takes a little while. You can actually, if you actually call the Groton Utilities customer service line and press one, it takes you right to our phone pay system. Yeah, no, but I'm saying the pay system takes a little while. Like the automated or whoever I'm talking to as well. But if you go on the Groton Utilities website, there is actually an icon you can push and put, put pay my bill. Yeah, I didn't know that. As long as you have your account. I didn't know that well now. I wondered, I'd be like, why is it so small? I did forget one question. I know that we discussed before um, either analyzing or at least realizing some cost savings from maybe not having to mail out so many bills. So once we do roll out the auto pay, is that in the plan to allow people to elect to get electronic bills or to get just a notification of their bill or something like that? Because it, to be <coughs> honest, if I'm on auto pay, I don't need the paper in the mail. I, I don't. I know that we send out notices with it occasionally. I don't. I don't know if it might be if there might be a future cost savings in instead of sending a whole bill with the return envelope and everything, we could send a postcard notice of. You know, if there's some something that we wanted to notify the customers of, um, but I think we had mentioned it before, and then I forgot or to email. follow up on that. Email is the, is the next thing that we are going to tackle. Yeah. One of the issues with um, Grant Utilities and email is we actually have a customized bill, and we have to be removed off the customized bill, so then it will be able to be a PDF form. Right now, we cannot do that. So that's our next our next step is once we get through the auto pay, we are going to get uh, we are going to be removed off of a custom bill because the bills that we you know when we originally went on here is what we were talking about that 15 years ago. This is a common bill now that we're, we we paid to have it customized. It's now it's just a, it's a blanket template that everybody uses now. So which will actually be available to us in our next upgrades, which will happen at the end of this year. After it's an ongoing process, <laughs> each one requires its own level of effort. So that'll be the next item that'll be available at some point after the first of the year. Any other questions or comments for Tina or Sue? Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for coming out. Thank you. All right, the next thing is 758 police chief. So, and we have four referrals. <coughs> the first one is Citizens with Autism Safety System CAST. Yes, you ready? Okay. I didn't know if you had that. If you had that one. I'm scared. Nope. <laughs> sorry. Well, and I'm. I might be doing them out of order from what you had said. Yeah, okay. uh, this would uh, be a resolution that would allow you in here to uh, uh, negotiate and uh, enter into the agreement with the town of Stonington so that they can formally share the uh, Citizens with Autism Awareness System in, to the uh, city of Rock. Uh, you'd be completely voluntary to opt in. Um, I also want to credit the audience, uh, Sue Wayne Chet, who will work on this project and the our team did an outstanding job. Uh, this is a Connecticut Council Municipalities award-winning uh, program and uh, be a significant upgrade to the public safety of uh, residents on the spectrum that uh, either work or live in the city of Brown. One of the things that, that this system will do is it will help protect our police department and it will also help protect the citizens because they will, the citizens will opt into this program so that if the police get a phone, get a call, then they can pull it up on this on the cast and it can identify whether or not someone on the spectrum resides at that residence and then there'll be information there'll be a picture they'll talk about what kind of things that that individual likes triggers those kind of things for example if bright lights and loud noises are a trigger then they won't go in with sirens and, and uh, flashing lights those kind of things that we've had an instance where there was a young man who was a Tom Brady fan and so 
you know, you were able to talk to him about Tom Brady and that just calmed him right down. So it, it is a way of, of uh, understanding what you're going into and, and uh, continuing with our interaction with the community. The uh, leading cause of death uh, for citizens on the spectrum is drowning. Uh, the GIS component is where they identify bodies of water nearby, uh, which when you uh, commence your search will be the first area that you check. Thank you. You're right. I forgot that too. So, and then one of the things once we get this, <clears throat> once we get this rolled out with autism, then we're looking to to expand this to dementia patients. So there's, uh, we see good uses with this software. Councilor Depot. I just wanted to comment that I think this is such a cool use of technology, like such a good, whoever invented this is so smart to, to, cause it's not very, I would imagine it's not very difficult to integrate into what you guys already do. When you're on a call, you already have to look up information. So it kind of seems like it's pretty seamless to add this in. Um, so I just think it's very cool. Any other questions or comments? And I need a motion to move this to the Mayor and Council meeting of 8 5 19. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. The next one is donation from Northeast Forensics LLC. Chief? We're uh, uh, very fortunate um, uh, to receive this donation, which. Uh, uh, in addition to being uh, seamless, uh, it will be great <laughs> <laughs> to bring it over. Uh, uh, once again, I want to recognize Sue Blanchett uh, for working with Roger Kaiser, uh, the person who developed this, and uh, I hope so that you can meet him personally um, when he came in. And uh, one thing that's, that's good about these type of proposals is you, you get the proverbial, what if I need this as a tool to assist me as a law enforcement officer to better serve the community. And if, if the IT people can be receptive to that and, and help us meet the citizens' needs. And uh, this funding will allow us with some licensing uh, fees to come on to, to make this a reality and, uh, and expand the program. Any questions or comments on this? Okay, I need a motion to move to the Mayor and Council meeting of uh, mm -hmm. August 5th, 2019. So second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Uh, the next one is purchase of a 2019 Ford Utility Interceptor. Chief? Uh, this would uh, greatly assist us in uh, <coughs> bringing our fleet up to uh, more of a modern condition than, than what I inherited. And uh, uh, it will uh, definitely be put to good use. Uh, this, uh, uh, this vehicle will be uh, definitely put on line right away and will be a great assistance to us. Okay. This has been authorized for funding. For the SIP. This is the uh, portion of what we authorized the, uh, uh, the expenditure. Just, just one question. Councilor Stafford. From the time of purchase and until it's fully equipped to be a police vehicle, what's the time frame? Uh, we're hoping to have this thing fully loaded uh, when it comes out. Um, sometimes you get it and it's piecemeal. Uh, it can be literally any, and, and we have to uh, find time and availability with IT coming in too. Uh, it can be time inclusive. Um, uh, the state bid on these vehicles, um, majority of it's electronics okay. coming in. So that, you know, it all has to be wired, it all has to work, and it all has to be secure. Uh, so when you get that out, you get a lot of hands looking at it and making sure it's quick it's on. So it's, it's kind of a misnomer thinking we're just going to get it and we're going to put it right on the line. I, mean, I wish I could give you a definitive answer because you know, Murphy has a way of showing up right on time. <laughs> but uh, uh, our hope is to get this thing on the line as quick as we can. Okay. Any other questions or comments on this motion? Okay. Hearing none, I need a motion to move this to the mayor and council meeting of August 5th, 2019. Yes, I move. I second it. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. And then the last one is the purchase of body cameras. Yeah, uh, the body cameras <laughs> will be uh, required under a uh, JAG grant uh, from the Department of Justice. Uh, I've been told when we know the chief of police meetings that uh, uh, there are two chiefs out there, those that have body cameras and those that are going to get them. <laughs> um, so that uh, we're looking at having them on there. Uh, they are a, an effective tool uh, in transparency to the public uh, and uh, they're very necessary in modern policing. 
uh, working closely with our IT department uh, to ensure that we bring them in and uh, all our, our items are secure and uh, that we protect the uh, public's privacy and people that may capture inadvertently on the tape would be able to disrupt. Uh, and it would be an excellent tool for us to present to somebody uh, criminal. If something occurs, this is what happened. Uh, it's also uh, uh, been proven that uh, uh, as far as complaints go, there it is. Uh, when it comes out, we take a look at it and it gives us uh, transparency uh, when we're dealing with what would happen on there. It's, a, uh, it's an effective, modern policing tool that's becoming more and more increasingly used. Uh, one feature that we're seeking on this is if a uh, weapon should come out of a holster, it would, uh, anybody within a uh, group of it, everybody's camera goes on, so you can capture mm -hmm. multiple uh, areas. We'll give great credit to uh, Captain Eric Jenkins, who's in the audience, who's working on this. And uh, one good thing about this is the uh, the item where it's mounted uh, works at an angle similar to the human eye. Uh, so it'll, it'll capture what typically that officer would have seen there. So it gives you a uh, reflective perspective of what the officer encountered uh, when he went in. Okay. Councilor Depot. Have we gotten uh, any feedback from officers, what they, how they feel about body cameras? The, uh, uh, I, yes, I have, and uh, there, there are some people that um, uh, are re reticent uh, for the program, and there's always a swear by it, um, you know, the jury you know, can, can be mixed. Um, that being said, anyone I, I've talked to is well, the, uh, uh once that they've had someone come in and say, hey, this happened, and then it's on tape, and, and it didn't, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's cleared from the officers in, in those cases. Um, I believe one of the counselors here is in the agency. Are you equipped with body camera? Yes, yes, sir. And uh, so it, uh, that's what we're doing. It does. It, it helps. Because you get, you get false complaints all the time, and it, it helps. And I mean, on, on a personnel standpoint, if, if, if you're not doing anything wrong, then you have nothing to worry about, you know, so. It, uh, and, and it's a training tool for us because we can look at it. And we're always looking to do things better. And, uh, and by no means are we saying as an agency with a great I am. Um, you know, if something comes in and we can do it better, uh, we'll take a look at it. If we see a uh, recurring problem uh, with personnel, then that's on me, that's on the captain. We've got to get the guys trained to take care of it. It's also a great uh, report writing tool. That's, that's what I was going to say. Uh, time wise, I'm sure on a, a supervising standpoint, um, they now just look at the footage, you know. They don't have to take a statement here, here, there. Those are all supplemental because the footage is right there, you know, so it's and good. You, and, and you miss things you know, when you went out and you take a look at it. And, and you know, it could be a tool that, uh, uh, you know, we, we pick something up that we didn't see, uh, you know, that, that is inculpatory and exculpatory evidence. Uh, they, they could be good for the defense and we go to school as that. But it's, a, uh, it's an accountability tool, and uh, I think it, it's, it's time has come. Okay. I have one question. Deputy <laughs> uh, Mayor. I, I had a question. First, I think it's great that you're working with the IT department. You guys are coming up with solutions. Um, I, I think that's really good. Um, the second thing is when we, when we have cameras, we're creating data, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so what are our plans with that data? Like beyond just writing the reports, um, we would have a storage um, we'd be able to download the disk um, right. for the court. Um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, the court can be antiquated, mm -hmm. uh, but we would be ahead of the court, you know, ahead of the, the sure. court would then giving them what they need. Uh, but they would have uh, uh, that tape, just like it, if we caught something in our processing room, mm -hmm. we would present that to the, uh, the court as evidence. So you think you'll, you'll be able to, to I mean, I, I guess my question is really like when we get the body cameras, we'll be set up with a way to store all this and... Yes, it's on cloud base. Awesome. It's a CGIS compliant cloud base. Thank you. First, I'd like to yes, just sure. thank you for trying to improve the quality of the city police department. And my question is, how are the body cameras activated? Is it from the time the officer steps out the vehicle or...? You can, you can double tap it uh, and it will come on. Okay. Uh, when they're they going to scenes. Uh, the reason I want to get the technology uh, uh, for the holster of the weapons driven, um, if, if a gun's got to come out, I don't think it was going to think to uh, <laughs> the, the correct, yeah. correct. stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, it, and it comes out. So, um, and that's going to capture uh, uh, that data everywhere. Um, I can think of uh, one incident that we had uh, recently when we were, uh, uh, had we had this capability, uh, I would have known a different scenario would occur uh, rather than the one that did. 
uh, based on training and experience. And you know, that may have changed a little bit of, of our response and really cut down a lot of time on the cold weather. Okay. Um, and that's where these things, these tools are very, very effective. Because um, they, they, the other sets of eyes can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I need a motion to move this to the mayor and council meeting of August 5th, 2019. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Jenkins. Yes, thank you. Okay, we're going to go to 561 Grant Utilities Financials. So these aren't final, final numbers as far as the payroll goes. They'll have, have all the payroll captured, but just from the timing of invoices coming in, there's still some outstanding expenditures that have not hit this yet. But as far as the revenue, all the revenue should be posted. So we we'll start with line 25, the total revenue. The budget amount was 54 and a half million, and the actual was just over 56 for the year. So one, just under 1.5 million over budget from the revenue. So the biggest piece of that is, is the residential. If we go down to uh, line 41, which is total operating expenses. The budget there was just under 50 million, and currently to date we've uh, spent 51 and a half million, or 1.6 over. The biggest contributor, as we've talked about in the past couple meetings, is the purchase power and um, the variation there, which is 1.4 over budget. And that has been corrected in the, in the new budget. So we go down to line 52, net income from operations, budgeted 4.5 million, and we're $33,000 in, in the good um, 4.5 million. So pretty much, the bottom line, the income from operations as it stands right now, again, this is that snapshot when this report was done, was right around on, on budget from the income standpoint. So that's the electric as, as a whole. So like I said, it, it'll change somewhat as all these will, but when you look at the budget, the actual from the income standpoint, it was pretty much right on target. Page eight. This is the water division. The total revenue for the year budget at ten and a half million, but did ten point four two or a hundred thousand under. And the biggest piece of that was in the commercial. It was just less water usage. That was budget based on actuals. Total operating expenses, budget was 10.2, and to date only nine, just, just under 9.1 has been spent, or 1.1 in the favorable position under budget. Now if we go down the line 44, the net earnings before the drinking water state revolving fund grant, you see that the budget amount, as the budget was built, to actually have a net loss of $722,000. Mm -hmm. Year date, it's and it has a net income of 1.3 million. The biggest piece of this is the um, interconnect. There's an expenditure that was budgeted for the interconnects, 
and that has not happened yet. I'm not really sure if there's anything else that is really triggered, but I think that's the biggest piece for that, the shortfall in our connect piece. It is, we, we did the projects, basically that were scheduled except for maybe one of them. Behind that one, and Ray Valentini ran, ran the projects really at the moment. And then, this is the drink and water state mm -hmm. revolving fund grant that was not budgeted for is just down at the bottom of the digital 5.8 .5 million. And that's what's been received this year from the grant as part of the, the water treatment program. Mm -hmm. So, you see the total net earnings is 7 million in favor when you count that grant money. So overall, revenues came in just a little bit under budget and expenditures came in significantly under. And then if we flip to page 13, which is the sewer provision. The total revenue that was budgeted was the 4.9 million. Year to date actual was 4.3 million. The shortfall of the 586, which we've been talking about since we started this with the um, deduct meters and um, not being 100% accounted for, again, prepared, fixed for the upcoming budget. Operating uh, expenditures, line 26, budgeted 2.9 came in at 2.6 or 281,000 under budget from the expense side. The net income from operations, which is line 37, budgeted for a $1.6 million profit, came in at 1.4. So considering the whole big picture of where this was in the first year and on the unknowns, it came in roughly 200,000 under the anticipated budget. So with that significant loss in the revenue, it recouped itself with the expenditure piece, so. Remember when we first started out, we had, <coughs> our revenue miss was 25 or 26%. And so now in the very end, we were up around 12%, so it was good. This year, we have a years of actuals to go off of and so you should see that our uh, sewer numbers should be more in line than this year. This will be the second year into this. Okay. Any questions or comments on throughout utilities financials? Okay. City budget presentation. The financials. 690, sorry. Again, this is just the one sheet um, handout that shows the expenditures for the, the general fund by the departments. Um, looking looking through again, this these well, it's gonna be the same as the Grant Utilities Financials. It encompasses all of the payroll through the end of the year. Um, there still are some outstanding invoices that are coming in so these numbers will change as well but it kind of gives you that again that snapshot of how we put this report together so you see for the most part all the departments um, ended up still with three four percent left in their budget i did as i no notified you last um, month planning and zoning had anticipated we we're going to go over there currently that is over by the fifteen thousand, which um, we'll get more answers. But once we get these numbers more finalized, we'll, we'll come back with answers as to actual reasons for these. Um, I know there was some additional con contractual services that Dennis had for, that were unanticipated. Um, and that also shows in the building commission line item, which is um, the building department boards and commissions, that's over 3,000. So those are some things that just came in that caused some contractual services to go over. But we'll We'll come back to you with that. But other than that, um, the, the big one that is still the big variance, and that is the contingency piece, which is the 790 down on the bottom. Those funds um, will be transferred to the undesignated capital projects to the capital non recurring fund, so they can still be used for future capital projects once the decision is made as to what they are. 
Let's see. That's the general fund expenditures. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. The last thing that you have on your item we're not going to discuss is 759 Thames Street Promenade presentation. We just late last week got a new update to the draft, so we've not had the opportunity to go through the draft. So it's more important to me that we do it right than do it fast. So I'm going to postpone this another month, uh, and then you will see the uh, presentation on the recommendation for uh, economic development on Thames Street. Now, one thing before we get a motion, the there's tours, water division tours. Is there a way that we can come up with a? Is it who wants to go on a tour to the water treatment plant, the PAF, or, or the watershed, or all three? Okay. So of these dates, the first part, you know, the first part's the water treatment plant, second part's the PAF, and the third part's the watershed. What dates are good, and that way we can get this set up. Because I'll need to to post this, even if I don't have a quorum, if I have more than one person, we're going to post it based on the FOIA discussion that we just had with Tom Hennick. Um, Which is Labor Day weekend? Is that one of these? Labor Day weekend. I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, that's, uh, Labor Day weekend is... Uh, it's, it's just the first or second, right? That weekend. That's in the... It's a, so it's like the that's weekend, outside it's of the weekend on the 30th. In August 30th is, is Labor Day weekend. Is the it? Week, the weekend of the 30th. Yeah. Okay, so the 31st is on that Labor Day weekend. Correct. I just wanted to point that out in case somebody had. Okay. Nope, that's that's good to know. I didn't know that. That's because I'll be away. That's all I know. Yeah. Let me talk to you about August 19th. About okay. Okay. For the water treatment plant. All right. So the water treatment August. plant. What's a good date for you guys? August 10th. You can only do the first one, okay? I can only do the second one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hold on. I'm flexible. Okay. Ready? The tenth is best suitable for me, <laughs> but I can I'll flex my schedule. The only one I could possibly do is this Saturday. This. Which one are you looking at? Is that this Saturday? Saturday? Or Council Court? That's this Saturday. Yes. yes. Yes, yeah, my only day. The other stuff is. Well, I got, I'll bring us back to the jail. This is probably going to be more. This is going to be like a science exam. <laughs> Any of the days better than us? We were kind of hoping we'd be able to. Honestly, right? Honestly, yeah. Honestly, I don't even. Yeah. I'm, I don't I'm, even think I can even. None are good. Yeah, none are good. I'm just going to say. Wouldn't it be out. better to? Don't get do it out in the summer. <laughs> got kids and you know, I mean, well, left. <laughs> no, we can do it later. We'll just, I'll, I'll look, we'll I do mean, it. I mean, we want to do Well, the like reason, that. all right. This is being driven by me because I wanted to get you guys to down to, to see the place because mm -hmm. I think it's important. But if you want to do it, so we can, I'll. I mean, I'm fine with you. I'm just saying it would, nope. the complication is because it's summer, I'm sure. All right, is it right. better if we do it in the fall for you guys? Yeah, that would, that would be better. August is a tough month. Yeah, okay. yes. I, I agree. All right, so I'll get, so same for all of them, right? All right, I'll come back, I'll come back with due dates. Sorry. Nope. Thank you. Nope. That's good. Good point. This is, no, absolutely, that's a great one. Hey. I'm missing something. Hold on, I'm not following my agenda. <laughs> I told you 759 we're not discussing, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. So move, second. We have a motion and a second. We are adjourned.